Welcome to this video lecture. We are continuing to talk about machine learning, but we're actually still talking about uh, analyzing your data just to try and better understand the relationships. So we're going to be uh, talking about correlation coefficients and generating a heat map of correlation coefficients, which can show you how all of your different data points relate to each other. All right, so I first want to introduce the Pearson correlation coefficient. This is actually very similar to the R-squared coefficient, where R-squared tells you how closely a modeled or predicted variable uh, maps up, matches up against the actual data. Uh, so the Pearson correlation coefficient is similar to that, except here you're just comparing two different pieces of data. So in this particular example, you're looking at a series of uh, data for one variable called X and then another variable called Y, and you're trying to understand how strongly does X correlate to Y? So the formula for the Pearson correlation coefficient is you take each data point of your X data, you subtract the mean of your whole data set for X, uh, you multiply that by a similar metric for the other variable Y, so each instance of each data point for Y, subtract the mean of all your data points, and then you divide that by this quantity, you take the sum of squares of each x data point minus its mean squared, sum that up, take the uh, each data point in the y set m minus its mean, square that and sum those up, multiply those products, and then uh, take the square root. So that may not be particularly intuitive, uh, so we'll just look at some examples. So in all of these examples, uh, we have perfectly linear correlated data. So if we had X here and Y here, you can see that there's a perfect linear relationship between Y and X, and that relationship is positive. So that gives us a correlation coefficient of one, and it doesn't really matter what the slope is, um, that those relationships would all be one. Uh, conversely, if we had negative relationships, these data sets are still perfectly correlated, but now they are perfectly inversely correlated. So, and this is still, just as meaningful. So that's one difference between the correlation coefficient and the R squared metric is that the correlation coefficient can be negative and negative values are still very significant. So uh, so here there is still a very strong correlation. It just uh, happens to be that uh, X is inversely correlated with Y. So let's look at some other data sets where we might not have this perfect correlation. So here, you can see there's quite a bit of scatter in the data, but you do still see this pretty strong linear relationship. So that uh, relationship gives us a correlation coefficient of about 0 0.8. When the data is much more scattered, it's harder to see a pattern, a really clear pattern there, but you still there still appears to be a linear relationship here. Um, so that would give us a correlation of 0 0.4. When the data is completely uncorrelated, that gives us a correlation coefficient of zero. Um, similarly, if the correlations are negative, you can have minus 0 0.4 or minus 0 0.8. And again, keep in mind these numbers, even though they're negative, are still very statistically meaningful and you still have to account for inverse relationships just as much as you'd have to count for uh, positive relationships. All right. so. Uh, one note here is that the, the Pearson correlation coefficient is a linear metric. So when you do have your data is perfectly correlated as a line, um, that gives you a perfect correlation coefficient. But this the metric does not do nearly as good at capturing nonlinear relationships. So here are some other examples, and these are all from Wikipedia. Um, so notice here there does appear to be a pretty strong correlation, but what happens is our positive data and our negative data sort of wash each other out. So if you were to draw a line through here, it would probably be somewhere through here, um, and that it would be really difficult to predict uh, y as a function of x if you're using just a purely linear metric. So um, there are some pretty clear relationships here in some of these patterns, like this circular pattern. Um, but these still have correlation coefficients of zero, meaning that y and x are uncorrelated as per this metric. So this is kind of to point out that this metric is not perfect. There are some pretty clear nonlinear relationships here, but this correlation coefficient doesn't really help us to decipher those. All right, we are going to uh, take a look at our data. This is our data from before where we generated this matrix of uh, scatter plots 
This, this is the pair plot from Seaborn, which we covered in the last video lecture. We are going to generate a similar matrix here, like this, but instead of plotting all the data, we're going to calculate the correlation coefficient for each of these pairs. So I am going to do that using uh, Python again. So we left off with our Jupyter Notebook from the last video lecture, calculating or importing the data from this module9data.csv. Um, if you're watching just this video and you wanted to import this data, there's a link to import it in the uh, description here of this video. All right, so we're gonna kick off from here as if we've, we've already imported the pandas library and the Seaborn library and already imported our data. First, what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the correlation coefficients for all of our data. So this is gonna be the correlation coefficient of x1 versus itself, x1 versus x2, x1 versus x3, and so on. So I'm gonna calculate the correlation uh, coefficients here. I'm gonna run that and we can see how that looks. Um, so this actually calculates those correlation coefficients and we can look at them and see that x1 is perfectly correlated to itself, that makes sense. And what you see down the diagonal of this matrix is a set of ones because of course, every variable is perfectly correlated to itself. Um, and this, this correlation table gives us a really nice way of looking at the data in tabular form. We can add in a heat map if we wanted using the Seaborn uh, tool that we've already used. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to just type in seaborn.heatmap. Um, and I wanna generate a heat map of this correlation matrix. I wanna give this this a cool warm color scale. So that's going to be blue for strong negative relationships, red for strong positive relationships. And I'm going to tell it I want to annotate this so it puts the labels on there. Okay, so here is how that correlation matrix uh, looks. And I'm going to jump back into my slideshow. Um, so here's how that correlation matrix looks as a heat map. So one is our variables that are really positively correlated to each other. and uh, this data set has some very, very strong correlations, so keep that in mind. You will Generally, this will not be the case. Often you'll have some weak ones that would show up as kind of a, a light red or a light blue or a gray if they're near zero, and that will tell you there's not much statistical correlation between those two. So let's take a look at this uh, cl more closely. We do see the ones along the diagonal just because each variable is perfectly correlated to itself. Um, here we see x1 uh, is very positively correlated with x2. So let's go back and take a look at what that relationship looks like. So we do see that there is a very strong correlation here and it is, you know, it's, there is some nonlinearity to it but not so much that it gives us a, a weak correlation coefficient. Let's look at the relationship between uh, x1 and y1. This is telling us that there's a strong inverse relationship because this is a, a negative number very close to one. So let's look at x1 versus y1. All right, so here we see back on our heat map, uh, I mean back on our pair plot, we see x1 versus y1 does have this strong relationship. And it is, you know, it's obviously not linear, but it's, uh, you can see that a linear approximation would be uh, pretty decent there. So these tools are just a way of, with the pair plot, just glancing at your data, and then with this calculation of the correlation coefficients, it's just a way of analyzing a data set, seeing how do variables track with each other. But it is pretty important uh, to factor in uh, nonlinearities and realize that you may have pretty strongly correlated data that's just nonlinear, and this correlation coefficient may not capture that super well. So it is good to glance at the data itself using a pair plot as a high level screening. Uh, but this uh, correlation coefficient and the, the matrix and heat map that result can give you kind of a, a better concise metric for how these variables relate to each other.